So we have a lens which is cut a bit in the center and then joined together. And on the focal plane of this combined lens, its lit is placed. Then we have a source with the given lambda behind the slit and we have a screen that is at a given distance from the lens. We need to find the width of a fringe on the screen and the number of possible maxima. So please do not be scared looking at this diagram, you will understand everything. So let's start from such so a prerequisite for this problem is 5.70 and 5.71. So there uh, we have explained certain concepts that I won't be explaining in detail again. So let's start. This is let's say the initial lens which is then cut from the center and a length is cut. So a by 2 on the top and a by 2 at the bottom. And then the lens is joined together. So of course the final lens will be shorter. So this yellow dashed line represents where the original top half of the lens was. And this green dashed line represents the bottom half of this, this full lens. So now uh, why we are using this dashed line so that it's very clear to you that so now imagine you have two different lenses. So one is this yellow lens and one is this green lens. Now focal point of both these lenses is going to be different. Here the focal point was same it would be lie it will lie on this line. But when we are combined it together like that. So now focal point of this yellow lens will lie on this line. See here, the focal length of this yellow lens was on this line. Here we have moved the lens a bit down. So focal length which was on this line before will be now on this line of yellow lens. Similarly, for green lens, the focal length was again on this line before. But now we have moved it up. So focal length of this green lens will be on this line. So let's check that into the diagram first. So if we have this yellow lens, focal length will be on this line, let's say here. And for the green lens, focal length will be on this line, that is here. Now we can put the slit on any point on the focal plane. So let's say we have put it at a height h on the focal plane. See here also the focus of this yellow will be here, focus of green will be here, but focal plane will be common. So on this focal plane, let's say on the height h from the axis of this joined mirror, we have kept the slit. So our source is here at a height h. And the focal length of green lens will be at a height a by 2 from here. And of yellow will be a by 2 down from the principal axis. Now let's draw parallel lines. So a parallel line that will fall on this uh, yellow part of the lens will pass through focus. And actually because it is in the focal plane, so every light ray from this source which is passing through the yellow lens will be parallel to this line, right? So all the light rays which are coming from the top part of this combined lens will be parallel to this ray. And similarly for green part of the lens, so you can imagine if this green lens was complete, then the parallel ray would pass through the focal point of this green lens. So it's not an actual ray, it is just an indicator that if this green lens was full, then this parallel ray will pass through this focal length. And that also means all the other rays which are passing through this green lens should be parallel to this ray. So all these rays which are passing through the green lens are parallel to this ray. All the lens, all the rays which are passing through the yellow lens are parallel to this ray. So now you can see we have two set of parallel rays which are emerging from this composite lens due to which interference will be produced on this screen which is at the length b from the lens. 
So now, if we know the angle between two parallel set of rays, then we have studied that in problem 5.070 that the fringe width is given by lambda divided by angle between the two rays. So in this case, the angle between this yellow ray and the green ray, which is theta. So fringe width is lambda by theta. Now, what is the value of theta? So you can see, so let's extend and come here. You can see that this angle theta between this yellow and green ray is theta one minus theta two. So theta one is this yellow ray and theta two is this green ray that it makes with the horizontal. So we need theta one minus theta two to get theta. So you can see this triangle where we have this theta one. So tan theta one is equal to this height upon focal length. And what is this height? This height is H plus A by two. So again, theta one, because these angles are all small, so tan theta one is this height upon focal length and this height is h plus a by 2. So theta one is h plus a by 2 by f. Similarly, theta two is this angle. So it is this height upon f and this height is h minus a by 2. So minus h minus a by 2 by f. So that gives theta is equal to a by f. So now we have the fringe width that is lambda by theta. So lambda upon a by f that it comes to be 0.15 millimeter. Now second part of the A is number of possible maxima. So you can imagine that not all the rays will pass through this yellow lens. So the, this yellow lens is finished here. So after that, the rays will not, will no longer be passing through this yellow lens. So let's take that line, that ray, which is just above this point of intersection. So we can see that here. So just above that point of intersection, we have the final yellow, final ray, which is passing through the yellow lens. And like any other lens that will be parallel to these yellow rays. So it will be coming at here like this. And the last green ray, which will be visible, will be just below this green line, just below this, uh, uh, this axis. So once that ray goes, so it will go like this and that like these other green rays will be parallel to this ray. So this is how that ray will be. And just like here, where the angle between the green and yellow rays is theta, here also the angle between this green and this yellow ray is theta. So I have just indicated this. So it's very clear to you that uh, the yellow, the rays passing through this yellow lens are here and in this common region. But here there is no yellow rays. And similarly, the rays passing through the green lens are in this region and the common region. Above this line, there is no green ray. So in this region alone, we have both yellow and green rays. That is the rays which are coming from both the lenses. So the interference is going to occur only in this region. So what is the length of this part of the screen? So the distance is B, common angle is theta. So that distance is B theta. So our length of the screen where we will see the interference is B theta. Now number of possible maximums. So we have seen that at the just beginning of this problem, 5.71, that uh, whatever is the screen length, you take the half of it and you see how many number of fringes fit into that half of the screen. So that divided by two is, is the half screen length. Divide by fringe width is number of fringes that are fitting in half the screen. So it can be a decimal number also. So we take the maximum integer function of that. So twice of that is the total number of maximas on the full screen, not counting the central maxima. So we'll add the central maxima again, plus one. So again, I have explained this in detail in problem 5.71 beginning. So you can check there. So if the screen width is B theta, so in this case it is B theta. So total number of maximas are that screen, total screen width by two by the fringe width 
greatest integer of that times 2 plus 1. So it comes to be 13. So this is the fringe width and the number of possible maximas for this case. All right.